Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about the y-intercept. We've already learned about the slope and how to find that on a graph, in a table of values, and also by using the slope formula. And now today we are going to be learning about the y-intercept. So grab this worksheet, it's called What is the y-intercept? And you can follow along with me as I go through the examples. Here's the problem, we are going to identify and interpret the meaning of each y-intercept. So first of all, when you have a graph, you can see the y-intercept because it's going to be the point where the line crosses the y-axis. And when you have a table, it's even easier to find the y-intercept. So let's start here by highlighting something that's important. So let's highlight this sentence right here. The y-intercept is the point where the line crosses the y-axis. And when I go to my first example right here where I have this graph, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually highlight the y-axis. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I just want to make sure that in the beginning you know exactly what it is that you're looking for when we're searching for the y-intercept. All right, so here's my graph. I highlighted the y-axis, right? Vertical axis right here, labeled with a y. Makes it nice and easy for us. And I'm going to find the point where this line, right, where this black line crosses over the y-axis or where it intersects the y-axis, which would be right here at this point. So I'm going to put a little point there for us. And I can see that this point of intersection, this line crosses this y-axis right here at positive 30. Now this is a little bit strange, but the variable that we use for the y-intercept is the letter B. And I always tell my students that maybe we can think of it as that's where the line begins, right? So if I'm looking at the line on this graph, it's kind of beginning right here. Okay, now, interpreting it is completely different, right? So if you have this problem and you're being asked to name the y-intercept and what does it represent, you can't just say the y-intercept is 30 because that's where the line starts. When they want you to interpret it, that's where you're going to be using these labels. So you want to look at the graph as a whole. So this graph is talking about the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit as the number of hours go by, right? So we start at zero hours. That means at the start, it's zero hours. And then here's the temperature in one hour, and two hours, and three hours, and four hours. We can see that the temperature is decreasing because the line's going down. We have a negative slope. So we need to interpret what this 30 means. Now, here's a little hint that I'm going to that I'm going to tell you that I actually have on the next slide. So let me just scroll down for a little bit here. Here's a little hint. Whenever you are describing the y-intercept, I think using these three words is a great idea at the start. Because that's what a y-intercept is. It's the beginning, it's it's the starting value or the initial value they call it sometimes. So when we look at this 30 right here, what that means is that the temperature was 30 degrees, right, 30 degrees Fahrenheit at the start. Before any time had passed, before any hours had passed, the starting temperature was 30 degrees. So that's how I would say that, right? It says um, that we're going to use the labels to determine the meaning. So I would just say at the start, At the start, the temperature was 30 degrees Fahrenheit, right? And we're just using this label right here. So at zero hours, at the start, before any time passed, the temperature started at 30. From there, we can see that it went down. All right, now when you have a table. When you have a table, it's even easier. Step one is you're going to find the place in the table where x equals zero. So I just look in my x column here, right? Remember that in a table, this first column is always the x, second column is always the y. So we're going to look in the x column and we're going to find x equals zero. And then we're just going to look at the number right across from it. We're going to look at the corresponding value. So here's x equals zero. Here's my corresponding y value. This is the y-intercept. Easy as that. So we're just going to say that B, which is the y-intercept, equals 250. Now, as far as what does this mean? Again, we have to look at these labels. We can't just say 
it means that the table started at 250 because what is the table even talking about? Well, the table's talking about weeks that have gone by and the amount of money saved. So at zero weeks, right, before any time had passed, at the very beginning, at the start, this person already had $250 saved. So the bank account wasn't empty at the beginning, right? This person already had $250 and then from there started adding money to it every single week. We can see because the number is getting higher. All right, so what does it mean? Again, I'm gonna use those words because I just think it's a really good habit to get into, right? At the start, right, or at the beginning, there was $250 in the account. All right, so let's move on to the bottom portion of this worksheet. Now, if you're feeling good about this and you wanna try a few of these problems on your own right now, you can certainly do that. If you'd rather just stick with me as I go through some more examples, I am fine with that as well, whatever works for you. All right, so graph, I'm gonna highlight this y-axis here. So I wanna make sure I'm looking at the right thing. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna highlight this y-axis over here. Okay, so I have everything highlighted that I need to highlight. Okay, I'm gonna find the point where this line crosses over the y-axis, right? Where does this line and this yellow highlighted y-axis meet? Well, they meet right here at zero. So the y-intercept, I'm gonna say b equals zero. Now, when they're talking about what it means, we are looking at this graph, right? We are looking at the labels on this graph. So this graph is talking about the number of hours on the bottom. We've got five hours, 10 hours, 15 hours, and the money earned in dollars. So apparently, this is a graph about somebody who's working and making some money. This y-intercept means at zero hours, Right? If this person works zero hours at the start, they make zero dollars, which makes perfect sense because if you have a job and you don't work any hours, I don't think you're gonna get paid. So we can say that at the start, right, you make nothing, right? You make zero dollars. Or you can word it like this maybe for no hours or for zero hours, right, you get zero dollars. Right, zero, zero. So you gotta work some hours before you're making some money. That's what that graph's talking about. All right, this next one. In the table, remember, we are looking for the point where x equals zero. So this is x, this is y right here okay it's not always going to be the first number just in these two examples it was so x equals zero we find the corresponding y value this is our y intercept right here so we're going to say that b equals 7.50 now as far as what this is like what this means we're looking at our labels here so the number of t-shirts cost 750, right? So four t-shirts are 4750, 15 t-shirts are 15750, zero t-shirts are 750. So this means that at the start, before you buy any t-shirts, right? So at the start, you have to pay $7.50. Now we don't know exactly what that's for, right? But over the years, some of my students have said maybe that's the shipping cost, right? Maybe you have to pay $7.50 per sh for shipping, and then after that, you pay a certain amount of money per t-shirt. Or maybe you're having these t-shirts designed, and this is some sort of a design fee that you have to pay. But this is just some extra starting fee. So the starting fee is $7.50. All right, this last example. Here is our y-axis, we've got that highlighted. Here is our line. The point where they cross over is right here and it's at negative 20. So we're gonna say b equals negative 20. 
All right, now as far as what it means, let's look at our labels. We've got some minutes going by and we've got a depth in meters. So this depth is starting at negative 20. So we've got to think of something. What's something that could be underwater 20 meters? Well, maybe a scuba diver. So we could say that the diver is starting 20 meters below the surface of the water. So we could say at the start, the diver is 20 meters below the surface. Okay, so just a couple of things to remember here. The y-intercept on a graph is wherever the line crosses over the y-axis, and it might be a really good idea to highlight that y-axis in the beginning. On a table, you're just finding the y value when x equals zero. So look for that zero in the x column on the table, look right across from it, that corresponding y value is the y-intercept. We use the variable b for the y-intercept, and when we are describing it, and you don't have to do this, you certainly don't have to do this, this is just my recommendation to you, is my hint down here, is to use the words at the start when you are describing the meaning of the y-intercept. Because the y-intercept is always the initial value. And as a matter of fact, I think we should probably go up to the top here for a second. And why don't we just add that to these notes right here, that the y-intercept is also referred to as the initial value, right? And the initial value is the starting value, the initial or the starting value. All right, hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to ask me in class tomorrow or ask your teacher. And I will see you guys all soon with our next lesson. Have a great day.